This is going to blow your mind. A hydrogen technology that has a potential not only to be as good as, but most likely better and cheaper than the battery technology for electric vehicles and transportation in general. But what if we could store hydrogen as a solid on the cheap? A startup may have a solid technology that could speed up the energy transition. Their proprietary technology may provide a one-step shop solution to capture, store, and even transport hydrogen. Best of all, the company claims that its technology is cheaper, safer, and better than their competitors. It showed so much promise in development that it was banned. Banned by the US government for a long period of time. It's a scam. I mean, seriously, you think that someone has been banned from some revolutionary technology and what do they actually have to show? Oh, some of the most primitive 3D renderings ever. And you take that as evidence that they've got some revolutionary technology. How did you know? How did you not know? Spoiler, it's so good that it was actually banned. I met Farrell. And this is one of the most scientifically illiterate videos you will ever see, followed very closely by this one and this one, with the latter display being particularly impressive as it's already cited as a source why this is credible on the hydrogen storage page of Wikipedia. A quick summary. And the best part is the way they recharge them is by using sewer gas and uh, things like that. It, uh, so basically, it's doing two things. One, it's taking um, hydrogen out of the toxins that we're putting into the atmosphere. And two, it puts it onto this solid state disk. And three, it, uh, you, can, you can replace these things on your own and make it work. Which is wrong on every conceivable level. And I'll tell you why. And you can recharge it in about five minutes. The company said they absorbed the hydrogen from the air onto a light-activated nanoscale film, which is 10 times thinner than a human hair. Uh, yeah, there isn't any hydrogen in the air to absorb. Now, sure, there is some water in the air, and water is two-thirds hydrogen, but that's no good for you. <laughs> See, we got this thing in science called conservation of energy, and it goes something like this. If you've got a charged battery, you can plug that into a device and run stuff off it and get a certain amount of energy out until you get a discharge battery. Now, I'm sure you can plug a discharge battery into something, but not a lot's gonna happen. To get back to the charge state again, you have to put the same amount of energy in as you got out. Now, water here is the discharge state. It's a flat battery. Absorbing water does nothing for you. Now, sure, you can electrolyze your water to get back hydrogen and oxygen, but to do that, you had to put all the energy back into it. You can't magically just get back a charged battery. Sure, you can absorb all the water you want, but if you want to turn it into hydrogen, you need to add a boatload of energy to the system. In fact, at least as much energy as you want your uh, battery to carry. And the device could extract metric tons per day of 99.9% .9 pure hydrogen directly from smokestacks and gas streams and turn it into a solid state. And where does uh, this magical self-charging battery get its energy from? Well, a leading internet pseudoscience and magicians think that it comes from an element called bullshitium, a freshly decayed product of gullibilium. When exposed to greenhouse gases like exhaust from, say, a smokestack, the film can capture metric tons of pure hydrogen from the steam without using any electricity. And I'll give you a clue. When a device needs a miracle to work, it's usually a scam. The company said they absorbed the hydrogen from the air onto a light-activated nanoscale film, which is 10 times thinner than a human hair. This hydrogen sponge can trap the gas at a low temperature and pressure, which translates into a lower cost. Then you just need to put a spotlight under the film to take the hydrogen back out. That sounds amazing, right? Uh, no, it sounds like you don't have the slightest clue what you're talking about. And that, that if a company from Bologna had claimed they'd made this magical technology that could power all electric cars simply by harvesting the light given off by traffic lights using special solar cells that were so good they were banned by the US government. But the company claims that their technology is about 200% longer lasting than batteries and about 15 to 20% cheaper to produce and maintain than other battery and fuel cell technology. And you compare it to something like lithium-ion batteries, 
late activated hydrides seem to obscure them on all fronts. Besides having a higher energy density, Plasma Kinetics boasts that its technology can be 17% less expensive and 30% lighter than lithium ion batteries for the same amount of energy stored. Their proprietary technology may provide a one-step shop solution to capture, store, and even transport hydrogen. Best of all, the company claims that its technology is cheaper, safer, and better than their competitors. What is this breakthrough hydrogen technology? The process is almost 100% carbon free, a claim that few other companies can make. Oh, by the way, recharging your cars from traffic lights using these hyper solar cells is 100% carbon free. As touted on their website, this is a three prong zero carbon technology, which is doing multiple jobs, capture, storage, and delivery. Now, apparently this pot of gold or hydrogen has a higher energy capacity and lower cost than lithium ion batteries. As touted on their website. Amazing. So I've had to tout it on the website that my new technology could recharge cars from traffic lights. You would be telling us about this amazing technology and how it would revolutionize the world. You see, gases are not some magical substance. You're breathing them right now. It's where you're getting the oxygen that's keeping you alive. And it looks a little something like this, with the red ones being oxygen and the blue ones being nitrogen. Now, what you're looking at here is roughly a nanometer in size. That's a billionth of a meter and a nanosecond in time scale, a billionth of a second. In reality, those molecules are traveling around at about the speed of sound. But what if we take one atmosphere hydrogen instead of one atmosphere air? Well, you'll notice they look very similar. And this is because all gases at the same pressure, uh, sensible pressures, contain exactly the same number of particles per unit volume. And what's more, the average particles all have the same average energy, which is basically another way of saying they're at the same temperature. But, of course, the oxygens weigh about 10 times more than the hydrogen. So if they're going to have the same energy, if they're going to be at the same temperature, that means that the oxygens are going to travel much slower. And, and so the velocity is the main difference that you see between these two gases. This also shows you why hydrogen balloons are so buoyant in air. I mean, you know, both of these gases at one atmosphere have the same number of particles per unit volume. And the oxygen molecules were about 30-ish, and the hydrogen's about 2-ish, which means a unit volume of air weighs about 15 times more than a unit volume of hydrogen, which is exactly what we find in reality. Now comes the neat bit. What happens if we cool this down to liquefy it? Well, then hydrogen looks like this at about minus 250 degrees Celsius, and liquid air like this at about minus 200. And if it looks kind of samey, it's because they are. If you do the calculations for the number of nuclei per unit volume, yeah, cubic angstrom in this case, both liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen are basically identical. Oh, a nice little internal consistency check here. That would mean that if we had a device that burned liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen, because we need two hydrogens to burn one oxygen, this tells us that the hydrogen tank should be about twice the size of the oxygen tank, which is pretty much what we find and would be exactly what we would find if such engines didn't run fuel rich for a variety of reasons. Right, so liquid fuel here is basically hands down the absolute most dense way that you can use to carry your fuel around, your hydrogen around. In fact, in this sense, it's exactly like gasoline. The only difference between the gasoline and the hydrogen is boiling point, at which point the absurdity of absorbing it onto a thin film becomes apparent. Because even if the thin film is pure liquid hydrogen, the most dense form that you can get, it's still only a very thin film. It contains virtually no stuff. All right, so I w so let's let's talk about the specifics here because you know when I was talking to Sandy uh, Amundro when we kind of discovered you guys. You know, he essentially made it sound like, you know, there are basically discs there that uh, that you would put in your car and they would get sort of used up and then you swap them for the new ones. And that's how our technology works. The same was true with the laser disc player. The laser shining on the disc releases the hydrogen. So we did our initial technology was with the disc. We were happy to use disc because discs provided us 
the opportunity to say, look, it's a laser. You're familiar with a laser. It's going to release hydrogen just the way music is released from your CD. I mean, let's just get a feel for how much hydrogen we could store on this thin film. And we're going to make the assumption that we can store it as pure liquid hydrogen, the most dense form that you can get, which you absolutely could not. But we're going to say, what if you could? The material itself is a nano graphite magnesium hydride film, about one tenth the thickness of a human hair. A human hair is about one tenth of a millimeter. That's 100 microns. Light activated nanoscale film, which is 10 times thinner than a human hair. So 10 times thinner than a human hair is about 10 microns. So let's make an estimate of their disc size here. It's going to be about, I don't know, let's say 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters. And the thickness is 10 microns, 10 thousandths of a millimeter or one thousandth of a centimeter, which means that the actual volume that can contain hydrogen here, even in its most dense form, which it won't be, but let's just give them the absolute best case scenario here. The best something like this can store is about one cubic centimeter of liquid hydrogen. And given that gases typically expand about a, a thousand fold when going from liquid to gas at one atmosphere, that means that this disc here contains about as much hydrogen as a small party balloon. The way it's supposed to work with this tech is that you could buy a hydrogen filled disc cartridge in a convenience store and it doesn't require special safety storage like canisters of hydrogen. But once it's empty, you return it and swap it for a fully charged one. The actual cartridge swap in the vehicle would just take a few minutes. Or you would actually be better off carrying your hydrogen in party balloons than as this uh, solid hydrogen disk. Compared to storing its liquid molecule, the solid storage of single atoms would incorporate a larger amount of hydrogen into a small volume. Amazing. Every word of what you just said was wrong. Plasma Kinetics introduced their light activated energy storage technology to the US Department of Energy, who first defined it as transformational. However, then they transformed their opinion a little while later into the label of disruptive. Uh, yeah. I've read the DOE's webpage on hydrogen storage and it's pretty confident. There is absolutely no way that the DOE looked at these things and said, wow, that's, that's transformative or disruptive. But good news, if we get 10 or so of these discs together, we can get enough to store 10 whole liters of gaseous hydrogen, roughly the equivalent of 10 milliliters of liquid hydrogen enough to fill about three party balloons in an absolute best case scenario. Now liquid hydrogen, it turns out, has the same energy density per unit volume as gasoline. Well, actually it's about a third that of gasoline. Nicely represented here on this uh, useful figure from that same Department of Energy website we saw merely seconds ago. So let's translate this into a gas tank size. Average gas tank size is about 15 gallons, 55 liters or 55 thousand milliliters gas equivalent stored by 10 discs of solid hydrogen about three milliliters equivalent of gasoline this is going to blow your mind a hydrogen technology that has a potential not only to be as good as but most likely better and cheaper than the battery technology for electric vehicles and transportation in general Apparently, their technology provides an energy source that falls under the U.S. national security umbrella. And for that reason, the U.S. government restricted plasma kinetics patent. It showed so much promise in development that it was banned. Banned by the U.S. government for a long period of time. When we introduced this technology in 2008, the U.S. government said it was, dis initially, they said it was transformational. Shortly thereafter, they changed the title to disruptive. Yeah, ever skeptical about claims of miracle technologies so ahead of their time by a genius who was banned by the U.S. government. I decided to actually take a look at some of their patents. Yes, their patents do suggest putting a micron thick layer on something like a CD. An idea is so dumb, it's not even dead on arrival. I mean, seriously, before we get on to why using lasers in such a thing would be a really stupid idea, or the problems that you would have for actually harvesting the gas that comes off these things, the bottom line is that the box they have there 
would hold more hydrogen if they just filled it up with a hydrogen balloon or something than that micron thin layer could ever hold. You would literally be better off going down to the local party store and buying some balloons and filling them with hydrogen. So it's not an exportable as missile fuel, but otherwise it's ready to go. Wow. So it was too good to be out there. Wow, that is, yes. that is awesome. <laughs> By providing a longer lasting yet lighter energy storage, the company is aiming to fuel the implementation of heavy hydrogen powered mobile applications like boats, trucks, and electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft or EV toll. Yeah, throughout this video, which has the best part of a million hits, the best part of a 98% approval rating, I was waving my hands in the air in despair till I actually tapped out this comment. The scientific illiteracy in this video is horrific. That's why I see the real engineering comment below. This is wild. First time hearing about it. And it's like, no, this isn't wild. This is taking a stupid idea and applying it in an even more stupid way. Look, coming back to the Department of Energy website on hydrogen storage, where you can basically do the physical things where you can compress it. Now you've got the problem that you've got a big, heavy cylinder, or you can refrigerate it, store it as liquid, where of course there you've got the problem that you've got to get it down to minus plenty and keep it there, which is almost impossible. That one's just horrifically bad. This one's just heavy. Uh, but then you get on to the variants of material-based storage. And you can see that things like the absorbance, where the idea here is you've got this sort of little, can you see you know, the atomistic view, you've got a framework of stuff here and hydrogen can absorb in the middle. And this is not that far off the cylinder in that you can see that virtually all of the volume here is taken up by the container. Uh, yeah, this would be a repeated structure, obviously. Virtually none of the volume there is available for storing hydrogen in, even if you get it in its most dense form, which would be liquid hydrogen. And of course, hydrogen molecules only weigh about two. Each one of these atoms weighs about five times that much. So the vast amount of the weight just goes into the actual storage material. And that's maybe nowhere near as clear as with the interstitial hydrides. And that's very similar to what these guys are pitching. They're going for a magnesium hydride. So nickel weighs 60, hydrogen weighs one. You can immediately see the problem that only one part in 60 of the weight of your material is actually hydrogen. It's a big metal block with less than 2% hydrogen in it at its maximum. And then you get onto the ones which are maybe more interesting, which are things like the you know, chemical hydrogen here. They've got a hybrid of a sort of boron and ammonia compound. But in reality, you substitute both of these for carbons and you've got ethane, which is chemically very similar to gasoline. I mean, you might recall me saying earlier that in terms of number density, the number of nuclei per unit volume, hydrogen, liquid hydrogen is the best way you can carry it around. Well, it turns out in methane, you lose a bit of energy for it. But in methane, the number density of hydrogen is actually twice as high as it is in liquid hydrogen. So, you know, this, this, this is actually not far off gasoline. Look, this is why all of these hydrides crash and burn as a method of storage. The mere fact that you just need one extra atom to store a hydrogen means that it takes up almost as much space as the hydrogen, and those atoms weigh between 10 and 100 times as much as the hydrogen you're trying to store. This means that they always kind of suck. And that's all their patent is for, a metal hydride. Nothing special, just a metal hydride. And not in the bulk, which would maybe make a little bit of sense, but it's a thin film, which is stupid. And then adding lasers to it, which is even more stupid. In any case, according to their patents, it's not quite, you just shine a light on it and the hydrogen comes out. Then you just need to put a spotlight under the film to take the hydrogen back out something that requires jaw-dropping levels of scientific ignorance to believe. You know, the sort of credulity where you believe it just because it's written on a website. According to their patents, their magnesium hydride runs at somewhere between 3 and 400 degrees Celsius. But wait, that can't be right. Our disinformation merchant here was telling us that this could all be done at room temperature. That's the big benefit from their system. The desorption process occurs without heating up the material like conventional metal hydrides. And requires the use of a 0.2 to 2 watt laser. 
Oh, and wait, remember that charged discharge thing from earlier? Well, hydrogen being absorbed to the surface or being liberated from it, one of those has to be the more stable state. And in this case, it's clearly hydrogen being stuck to the surface. That means to get the hydrogen back off again, you've got to put that energy back in. And that's basically the energy of formation of magnesium hydride, which is about 35 kilojoules per mole, that sort of thing. Then you can burn that hydrogen, and if you're lucky, you get about 10 times that amount of energy back out. Which maybe sounds good until you consider what is actually required here. Remember, the most powerful laser they were proposing to use here was 2 watts. And at best, the energy of the hydrogen that you're going to get out is going to be about 20 watts. Then you take a look at how much energy it takes to run a typical car, which is in the 10,000 watt range. So to run that, you would need kilowatts of laser power. And this is, of course, assuming it works, which, of course, it won't. This is pure Theranos. And then they even go on to start pitching that it's going to run on a film in a cassette. And pray tell, what is this magical, flexible material which you're going to mount 10 microns of magnesium hydride on? Uh, bearing in mind that magnesium hydride has properties akin to brick dust, sure you might be able to make films out of it, but not flexible films that you can roll up and unroll. Let alone ones that are going to operate at three to 400 degrees Celsius, by which point virtually every plastic will have turned into a pile of goop or not have suitable properties, you know, like being too heavy or too expensive. This is going to blow your mind. There is zero chance of this ever happening. Before I get to that, I'd like to thank Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. This video is brought to you by the Volkswagen ID4 EV, which I am now a Special thanks to Truebill for sponsoring this video. <laughs> Don't do any of that commercial crap. Patrons support this channel because there is real value to be had in the wide world by having someone with real science understanding take a look at these things. Especially given that not only have these things made it onto the wiki page about hydrogen storage, based on nothing more than some bargain basement computer generated graphics and the mindless recitation of impossible claims by scientifically illiterate um, gentlemen, but it's also made it onto the magnesium hydride page. Yeah, this is now actually something you can read on Wikipedia. The international patents have been granted for a rechargeable, low pressure, low temperature hydrogen storage system employing nano structured magnesium hydride for high density hydrogen absorption and laser activated desorption. A practical system employs a treated polymer substrate. Yeah, no, no polymer is going to work at this sort of temperature in the form of a disc or tape for use in long term storage, transportation and grid stabilization. Yeah, none of that is true. But the last sentence is the one that really takes the biscuit. The system has the unique advantage <coughs> of not obeying the laws of physics in its ability to passively capture hydrogen from industrial flues and waste treatment plants before it can bond to form greenhouse gases. That makes no sense. Greenhouse gases, what, like carbon dioxide? That, um, kind of notable in that they don't contain any hydrogen. But for fun. Let's just see how much wrong these people can get in such a short period of time. Every time one of these guys says something that is demonstrably wrong or just doesn't make a lick of sense, you're going to hear this sound. During the absorption cycle, the positively charged hydrogen atoms are attracted by the negatively charged sites within the film's nanopores. Because of the material photoactivity, when a laser hits the film, the light switches the polarity of the bond to positive, which frees the hydrogen atom. The film is covered in billions of tiny, negatively charged points covering the surface. Hydrogen, if you remember back in your high school chemistry class, is positively charged. When exposed to greenhouse gases like exhaust from, say, a smokestack, the film can capture metric tons of pure hydrogen from the steam without using any electricity. The reason the company chose magnesium as a primary ingredient is that it's the element plants use in nature during photosynthesis to store light energy. Yeah, like I was saying, screen-punchingly bad. I'll probably at some point just do a direct rant 
on my second channel, Voice of Thunder, about just how much they get wrong in these videos. Here, believe it or not, I just kept it to the more important stuff. So for the moment, that's today's video. If you enjoyed it, drop a thumbs up on it. Subscribe if you don't want to miss out on more like this. And as ever, if you really like the content of this channel and want to support it directly, you can do it through Patreon. And uh, thanks for watching.